like to call the meeting to order. It is Wednesday, June the 4th, 7 p.m., and this is our regular meeting of the Ottawa City Commission. I'd like to welcome um, the nice crowd that's in our audience this evening. Also, those listening on the radio, on KOFO, and on the Government Access Channel watching it there. Could we have a, a roll call, please? Mayor Reed. Present. <coughs> Commissioner Skidmore. Present. Commissioner Jorgensen. Present. Commissioner Dickinson. Present. Commissioner Kaler. Present. We are all present and accounted for. So at this time, we will start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by um, the invocation, which will be led this evening by Reverend Tim Soule from Westminster Presbyterian Church. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to gather here. As we do so tonight, we do, as always, giving thanks for our community. Ottawa is a community, much like many others, but this is the one you have given us to love and care for and serve. So we ask that you will help us to do it to the very best of our abilities. For those who lead us, we give you thanks. And tonight, we especially give thanks for those in our fire department, the work that they do in caring and, and uh, looking after our needs in this community. Bless them as there are changes there, and Rick as he moves to new things and new adventures in his life. Again, for our life together in this place. Bless us and help us work here very well together. Not just for our sake, but for the sake of your reign and rule in all the earth. Praise be to you, O God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Saul. This time we will consider the consent agenda. Madam Mayor. Commissioner. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. And I should um, state that that also includes the approval of a new member to a board, the uh, Airport Advisory Board, which is Tom Chapel, and then, of course, it would include our, our agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. At this time, we would have public comments. Madam Mayor, we have a proclamation to read this evening for Special Olympics Kansas Law Enforcement Torch Run Day. Okay, I have the proclamation and um, Larry B. Alexander will accept it along with, I think, a special guest. So I'll go ahead and read that and then if you guys want to make your way up, you can do that. This proclamation was also read yesterday at the passing of the torch between Douglas County and Franklin County officers um, out at Cargo Tech or Calmar Industries. Whereas the mission of the law enforcement torch run for Special Olympics is to increase awareness and raise funds for the Special Olympics movement, and whereas Kansas law enforcement officers were the first to carry the torch when the torch ran began in 1981 with the Wichita Police Department, each year the law enforcement torch run initiative grows bigger and better. And whereas since its inception in 1981, the torch run has grown extensively with over 142,000 volunteers worldwide, spanning 48 countries and raising more than $414 million for the Special Olympics movement. And whereas as the largest grassroots fundraiser and public awareness vehicle for Special Olympics, the LETR raised over $51 million in 2012 including more than $500,000 raised in the state of Kansas alone. Whereas, fundraising is only part of what the officers involved with the initiative give to the movement. Special Olympics athletes say that law enforcement officers are truly supportive of the cause, extending to them friendship, acceptance, and encouragement. And whereas Ottawa and Franklin County law enforcement officers continue to support the Special Olympics and will again carry the torch on June 4th, 2014, Whereas Cargo Tech Solutions LLC supports Kansas Special Olympics and such is recognized as guardian of the flame of hope for their partnership with Special Olympics of Kansas and Law Enforcement Torch Run. Therefore, the governing body of the City of Ottawa, Kansas does hereby proclaim June 4th, 2014 
to be Special Olympics Kansas Law Enforcement Torch Run Day in the city of Ottawa and urges citizens to come out and watch the torch run as it happened this morning uh, as it passed through our community and to support the athletes that participate in the Special Olympics. So I don't know which one of you want to accept it or both. <laughs> Do you want? Thank you for coming up. Thank, Thank you. you. And you have the podium. You can speak. Both of you can speak. <laughs> Real quickly, I'll just say, you know, thank you guys very much for doing this. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Um, it is a fun time to come out and join the Special Olympics. And I brought uh, Chuck with me, Chuck uh, Crawford here today, which is an athlete here in local Franklin County. So, you want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys again very much. Thank you very thank much. I believe the state competition for Special Olympics is this weekend, so I'm not sure who all in this region might be participating, but we wish them the best of luck. And we are so grateful for the participation of our law enforcement, so thank you for that. Um, I'm going to move to item number nine, declaration, and at this time I'd like to give commissioners a chance to declare any conflict or communication they've had that might influence their ability to consider today's issues impartially. Anyone? <laughs> okay. And we'll move to item 10. Recognition and presentation of plaque to Richard Oglesby, Assistant Fire Chief, upon his upcoming retirement. After 33 years of service, Richard Oglesby will retire on June 13th of this year. Rick will be honored with a public rece reception on Friday, June 13th from 2 to 5 p.m. at Fire Station Number 1. And I believe Chief Carner, I'm going to hand you this plaque so that you can. Actually, Mary, I thought I would let you present okay. that after I'll some wait comments till you, that okay. I would make. That'll, be, that'll work. Well, good evening, Mayor, Commission. Richard Oglesby began his career with the City of Ottawa on October 13th of 1981 as a public safety officer. Uh, he later transferred to the position of driver engineer and then was subsequently promoted to lieutenant in May of 1998. He was then promoted to the assistant fire chief on October the 10th of 1999 and continues to serve in that capacity today. On June the 20th, assistant chief Richard Oglesby will retire after 33 years of dedicated service to the city of Ottawa. Actually, his last day will in the office will be June 13th and we are holding, uh, has stated, a public reception <coughs> at Station 1 from 2 to 5 and would certainly invite uh, the public to stop by and congratulate Rick for his service. I've had the pleasure to serve with Rick for, well, over 30 years. <laughs> That's a long time. During that time, I can tell you some of the things that have impressed me about Rick, and this is just some of the things, is his dedication his commitment, his constant demonstration of professionalism. Um, we have, in fact, filled the position of assistant fire chief, but we will not fill a position vacated by Richard Oglesby. He has dedicated a large part of his life to this position and made many personal sacrifices in service to others. One of the things I would like to share is all city employees are subject to a periodic performance evaluation. As a part of that process, they are afforded the opportunity to write comments or submit comments if they choose to do so. And normally I wouldn't do this, but I think these comments are certainly appropriate. I would like to share with you uh, some comments that Rick had provided on a recent performance evaluation. And again, these are his words. I hope that each day that I can make a difference in someone's life. These words are more than just comments. They're a true reflection of Rick's dedication and commitment. I'd also like to take this opportunity to recognize uh, Rick's wife, uh, Susan. Raise your hand, stand up something. <laughs> In this profession, it's not only the employee, but the entire family is a part of the success. We must have that support at home in order to be successful on the job. And I know that uh, Rick has always had that, not only with his wife, but his three sons as well as they were growing up. And again, thank them ever so much for the contributions that they had made as well. 
I can tell you, Chief, that there is no words that would adequately capture my deepest appreciation for the work that you have done. So I'll simply say congratulations on your pending retirement and thank you for your service. the Kleenexes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started there. <laughs> um, commissioners, I'd just like to say this, and I've tried to choose my words pretty careful, but I'd like to say thank you to the city of Ottawa who took a chance on me some 33 years ago. You invested in my training and my skills that are invaluable. I've learned a lot about leadership, and a lot about being a servant. You saw value in what I might become and not what I was. The lessons and the things that I have learned will always be a part of my life. I fell in love with the idea of being able to help people. I fell in love with the idea of being able to make Ottawa a better place. I never dreamed that I'd really be here this long. The lessons that I learned, they altered my life. I'll never be able to sit with my back to the door in a restaurant again. I'll never be able to go to a hotel without looking at the exit plan or checking out the sprinklers. <laughs> the city has become a second family to me, one that's always been there in my most difficult times. The fire and the police departments have been great people to work with. I've often said that I wish I would have kept a journal of all the things and all the people that I've seen. And I've had some great mentors over the years. Junior Diamond, Fred Espinosa, Charlie Bowling, Daryl Shutt, Chief Richard Tao, Orrin Skiles, and James Raby. Chief Carter and I, and I uh, like he said, we've worked together for 30 years. I was there when he came on. We were partners, and we've remained friends for over 30 years. And I wouldn't leave now if I didn't feel that the time was right. I've worked for every city manager that the city of Ottawa has had. <laughs> and Richard Ninesett has proven to be the best and someone who truly cares about the people at all levels in the city. I've worked through some tough and trying times of the past. I worked some of the biggest fires in recent city history. I did not make this career trip alone, but I made it with my wife Susan, who has stood by my side the whole time. And I know it was her prayers that kept me safe all these years. And there were many close calls. So I thank you, dear. My family means everything to me. And they always understood when I had to leave for a call or I didn't get to come home. I say thank you to Anthony, Jason, and Timothy. I know that it's not easy to leave something that you've spent most of your life at, but I know that a new chapter must be started for myself and for the department. My prayer is that I leave it a better place than when I started. Thank you. <coughs> I say that I think how you have performed your job is how you have lived your life and your faith and that's very apparent and as a city I and as a commission you know I don't know how we thank you enough as Chief Carner said so we do want to present this to you very small token but it is in gratitude from the city so for 33 years of service thank you so much <laughs> Just 
just didn't flash. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, we will move to item 11. Report on general obligation refunding and improvement bonds. Earlier today, the city received bids on general obligation bonds for the purpose of refinancing two state revolving fund loans and for the issuance of $1,100,000 for street improvements. The city's financial advisor, David Arterberry of George Baum and Associates, will provide a report on the results of the bidding process. And I believe you have a copy in front of you as well, Commissioners. Um, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, I thought what I could do um, real quickly is just kind of go over with you what we've been up to since I was last here to talk about the refinancing, um, then talk a little about the sale results, and then um, ask, see if anybody has any questions, and then actually turn it over to Dottie Riley, who uh, would be willing to walk you through the next steps. Um, assuming you like the results of the sale, she'll walk you through what needs to be done to, to complete the issuance process. Um, since we were last here, we've been up to quite a bit. Um, one thing that we did was uh, we worked with staff to get the bond rating for the city affirmed. Uh, and the process went very well. Um, Mr. Neinstadt and Mr. Bird were very helpful and did a really good job of presenting the information to the rating agency. Um, after the, afterwards, we had a little bit of a discussion <laughs> and um, the question got bought up, uh, you know, what does the rating agency look at? What, what from their perspective, uh, is the most important or probably the, the, the biggest factor that goes into your rating. And I'd have to say if there's any one thing it would probably be fund balances. That, that's the one thing that they look at when evaluating your credit that they realize you have under your control is your, is your fund balance, particularly in your general fund. So I'd encourage you as you go forward and budget, keep that, keep that in mind. That's an important piece of your rating. Um, in addition to the rating, we also um, worked on preparation of the offering document um, Dottie's office worked on preparation of the legal documents necessary. Um, the offering document was sent out uh, last week to potential purchasers and um, we accepted bids from those potential purchasers up until uh, 10 o'clock this morning. And on the report, I'll, I'd like to kind of show you what this, those sale results look like. Um, first of all, if you look over on page one of that report, you'll see a listing of the bids that were received. Um, the city received a total of five bids, and as you can tell by looking at the interest rates, they were all very close. Uh, in fact, that difference between the, the first bid from Robert W. Baird and the next bid by D.A. Davidson and Company, I think you have to go out four decimal places before you see the difference in the bid. So it was real good, aggressive bidding. Uh, and the best bid, you know, as you can see, was turned in by Robert W. Baird. Um, just to let you know, they're not alone in their bid. They had other banks and financial institutions as part of their syndicate, uh, including um, United Missouri Bank was part of their syndicate. Um, question then is, how, how did we end up with, with our estimated savings? Um, and I'm pleased to report that we did really well. Um, if you look on page two, um, you will see the savings that was able to be achieved based on Robert W. Baird's bid for the refinancing of the sewer loan. And you'll see there the total savings um, uh, on the right-hand side in the box is $269,615.89. That's just on this portion. Uh, over on the next page there on page three, you'll see the, um, the savings associated with refinancing the, the water loan. Um, and that's another roughly $59,800. Uh, in total, the savings was, um, Richard wanted it to the penny, $329,415.42. Um, I think last time we were here, the estimate was about three hundred eleven. dollars I think the first time it was around two seventy. dollars So I'm pleased to report that we you know, exceeded even the, the, the most recent estimates. The present value percentage savings, and I, I, I know you had looked at a minimum target of 2.25 percent. Uh, we ended up um, present value savings percentage of 4.8 uh, percent of the amount of debt that was refinanced. So um, needless to say, I'm real pleased with the results. On the next couple of pages, you'll see the um, amortization schedule for the aggregate issue. 
and for the street portion of the um, bond issue. And then on the very last page, you'll see the total bond issue size ended up at 7855 which was um, lower than the, the maximum amount that, that was estimated at about $8.25 million. So um, obviously pleased with the results and, you know, let me know if you've got any questions. Um, <coughs> David, I do have a question. Um, sure. The, and and am I correct in reading that the, the cost of the, uh, the interest on the, uh, the street improvements is about 311000 it's on page five. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. And so basically, the savings that we're experiencing on the sewer and the uh, and the uh, water uh, is is pay is paying the interest on the, uh, yeah. On the streets. That, yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Arterberry? Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Good evening, <clears throat> the shorter Dottie Riley <laughs> with QTech Rock, the city's bond council. Um, uh, congratulations on your sale results. Um, as identified in your agenda, you have three actions to take tonight if, if you're ready to proceed. Um, the first to um, award the bonds to Robert, De Robert W. Baird. Um, the second to pass an ordinance authorizing the issuance of the bonds and the third to pass a resolution that has the, the details of the bond issue. Um, as in the ca is this the case whenever you issue general obligation bonds, when you're approving the ordinance and the resolution, you are, um, you know, committing the city to the issuance of the bonds. Um, agreeing that the full faith and credit of the city is backing the bonds, meaning you, you know, to the extent you do not have other available funds, you'll levy sufficient taxes to, to pay off the debt. Uh, in this case, the majority of the debt you're replacing one general obligation bond uh, or loan, two loans, with a bond at a lower interest rate. So good for you <laughs> for making that uh, refinancing option. Um, the resolution really has all of the kind of details of the bond issue, um, including identifying the maturity schedule, interest rates. Uh, we're using the state treasurer as the paying agent and registrar for your issue as we have for all of your prior issues and is fairly common um, in the state of Kansas. Um, I, I do always want to remind governing bodies that uh, the interest on the bonds is exempt from both federal and state income taxation. And in order to maintain that federal tax exemption, you have to uh, comply on an ongoing basis with federal tax law as they relate to these projects. Um, I, I don't anticipate anything that you know could, could create any kind of issue with that, but we discuss with staff what those requirements on are on an ongoing basis and also there's more detail provided in the documents but generally it means that you're going to pay debt service from public sources of money and that the items that are financed or refinanced by this issue will continue to be operated as public improvements which I'm sure um, is what you anticipate uh, one other item I just want to call to your attention for quite some period of time, uh, cities have been required as part of their bond issues to also agree to provide continuing disclosure to the marketplace about the city's finances. Because even though you sold these bonds today, the bonds trade potentially every day of the week. And so it matters to um, investors what's going on with you, these, the city and these bonds as long as the bonds remain outstanding. So the documents also require that you provide information about the city's finances on an annual basis and also that you report certain specified events uh, in a timely manner if they occur, like you decide to call the bonds in early, you need to let the marketplace know that. If for some reason you'd ever be in default, you have to let the marketplace know that. Um, so um, there's heightened significance to these disclosure requirements in today's market. So I just want to make sure that you're aware of them. 
Do you have any questions? Donnie, when you refer to the, the marketplace, is it an organization? Is it a, a it's body? It's any, anybody it's who could ever own your bonds, okay. which is anybody. Right. So people in your community, people in a foreign country, people, right. it, it, you know, okay. it could be anyone. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? I'm assuming these uh, these um, this information that we've been sh we would share mm -hmm. we've been sharing on a regular basis anyways because of our prior bonds is that right? yes yes Good and the question. terms can never change when they're sold we know that too it, th that's true okay. I mean in terms of the interest rate the and interest maturity rate schedule those things remain plan. fixed unless you would decide down the road that you want to refund these bonds <laughs> Uh, you know, Rates in which lower. case you could substitute it with a new bond issue. So, yeah. okay. okay. Dottie, would you mind sharing with um, the listening public who may not have um, heard or been um, present in our study session um, the results of the bond rating and what uh, the city actually obtained in that bond rating? I think I'm going to let David George George handle that because he was more involved in the bond rating process. Sure. The, um, the city's bond rating, um, it, it has received an A1 rating by Moody's Investor Service, and, and that is a very good medium investment grade rating. Um, Moody's rating categories go, go AAA, AA, A, BAA, BA, and B. And within each of those categories, there's a further delineation of one, two, and three. So A1 is is a good medium investment grade issue. And like I mentioned, um, you know, they, they look a lot at your fund balances, but they, they do look at a lot of other aspects of your financial operations, uh, your debt levels, um, the economy, and uh, they do a really, I, in my opinion, a real good objective evaluation of, of your credit. And an A1 is a good rating to have. Thank you. Any other questions? And we appreciate both of your company's work on our behalf. I know that's a huge amount of work. Greatly appreciate it. So at this time, then, we would move to item 12. Action to accept the lowest and best bid. And this would be a motion to accept the recommended bid if, if it's appropriate to you. Madam Mayor. I would move, I move to uh, accept the recommended bid uh, from Robert W. Baird and Company, Inc. Is there a second? I'll second that. And that's a motion and a second coming from our banker, so that's a confident <laughs> feeling. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Okay, could we have a roll call vote, please? How do you vote, Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Mayor Reed? I vote yes, and motion carries. So, item 13. An ordinance authorizing the issuance and delivery of general obligation refunding and improvement bonds. This authorizes the issuance and delivery of its general obligation bonds to provide funds for permanent financing for sewer and water improvements through the prepayment of the loans and provide funds for street improvements as well as pay costs of the issuance of such bonds. And she has pretty much described all that. Um, so. I guess I would entertain a motion at this time. I'll make, oh, go ahead. I'll make this motion, <laughs> Madam Mayor. We approve it. item number 13. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, can we have the vote, please? How do you vote, Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Mayor Reed? I vote yes. Motion carries. And then finally on this issue, um, item 14. A resolution prescribing the form and details of and authorizing the delivery of general obligation refunding and improvement bonds. This authorizes the delivery of Series 2014A general obligation refunding and improvement bonds previously authorized by city ordinance. Is there a motion? Madam Mayor. Commissioner. <laughs> I move to uh, uh, adopt the resolution as described in item 14. And a second. <laughs> okay, it has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Can we have the vote, please? How do you vote, Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. 
Mayor Reed. I vote yes and motion carries and that is good news a good way to end those items so yes. thank you so much <laughs> thank you okay that will move us to item 15 commercial real estate sales contract for property at 123 West 4th Street this is a contract to sell old well to sell city property to DLD land holding company LLC which our city attorney Bob Bezik will discuss with us it is old property <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, before you, you have a contract from DLD Land Holding Company, uh, essentially Rick and Diane Dietz, for the uh, acquisition of city property on 4th Street, the former city hall uh, for the city of Ottawa and an adjoining building. Uh, the contract itself is a, uh, a relatively standard sales real estate sales contract that obligates according to its terms. In meeting with Rick and Diane Dietz earlier when they met with staff, we raised a number of uh, concerns and issues that they could deal with when they presented this contract to us. Uh, <coughs> first and foremost, we uh, asked for the price, and the price that they put on the contract was $50,000 for the acquisition of all properties identified in the contract. The second aspect of this is that we would have month-to-month uh, -month rights to continue to use the adjoining building that we currently use for storage for I believe the uh, Public Works Department uh, that is uh, basically callable upon 30 days written notice uh, there's no obligation of the Dietz's to keep this going however so long as the uh, property is open mutually beneficial we would have that right uh, this has a, a closing date that's put a little bit forward there's a number of details that have to go through there is also a requirement that I usually uh, place in when we're selling city property that deals with, it's, call it the anti-flipping uh, rule, but essentially what it means is that the people that we sell property to are going to hold the property. The obligation in this contract is for two years. Uh, so uh, whoever purchases the property, DLD, would ha have the obligation or, or the burden of holding the property for two years so it can't be purchased and sold right away. Uh, there is a minor exception for inter uh, LLC transfers if they're selling it inside of, of their company, but that's the only issue that's there. Uh, I, ask, I would ask for any questions that you have regarding this. Um, it's a relatively straightforward proposition. I will tell you that in dealing with the Dietzes, they presented a business plan that essentially ties together a number of properties up and down the Prairie Spirit Rail Trail and this is part of the uh, business plan that they have and this property itself I believe is fairly integral to their business plan and it's nice to see an adaptive reuse of City Hall that is that is the plan don't anticipate any issues regarding zoning or uh, or, or dealing with the property itself so it looks like it's a a good plan and certainly workable in this community and would be a benefit to this community I'm excited to get the building back into use for sure. Yes, uh, w one note about the value, and I touched upon this at, uh, at the uh, planning session that we had a couple of days ago. This property has been on the market for, gosh, a long time, decade, decades, uh, certainly since the school district vacated the property, but actually it was on the market before then. Uh, this is the uh, first contract that I've been able to bring to you that actually uh, places a, a, uh, a statement of value associated with it that isn't gift value. It's actual real consideration, real money in exchange. Uh, there, there may be some comment in the community, why didn't we get more, could we have gotten less? The answer is that this is really the first uh, good faith purchaser-seller contract that we've had. This is the first expression of value that we've had. And gosh, it's been on the market for a long time. It's not like there hasn't been opportunity for others. Uh, it's my recommendation that if you are interested in selling the property, this is a valid contract according to its own terms, enforceable according to its own terms, and would recommend, uh, if you are so inclined, a uh, motion authorizing the mayor to execute the contract and other associated documents. Are there any questions for Mr. Bezik? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And we will, um, I would entertain a motion. Madam Mayor. Commissioner. I move to accept the contract for the property at 123 West 4th Street. Is there a second? 
I'll, I'll second that. Okay, it has been moved and seconded for to accept the real estate uh, sales contract for 123 West 4th Street. We have the roll call vote, please. Okay. Oh. Is there, I want to. Was oh, there any discussion? I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and I, uh, Madam Mayor, I'm going to abstain uh, from voting on this. Um, it's a matter of public record that I have a, a business relationship with DLD Holdings and. Uh, um, although it's not a uh, conflict of interest in the truest sense of the word, uh, I want to avoid any any appearance of conflict of interest on this issue. We appreciate that. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. okay. Can we have that vote, please? How do you vote, Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Epstein. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Mayor Reed? I vote yes, and motion carries. Item 16. An ordinance rezoning an area within city limits and repealing the corresponding section of the zoning map. The city's planning commission voted seven to zero to allow the rezoning of several tracks on South Princeton Street from R1 low density residential district to C3 general commercial district. And Mrs. Lee will discuss this with us, please. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the project under proposal is a redevelopment project and as such uh, the developers have entered into contracts for acquisition of these six parcels which currently hold residential structures. Um, when we looked at the last time we did zoning changes throughout the community, our first preference really was to absent a, a <coughs> project eminent or something like that to keep most zoning the same as it had been um, until such time an opportunity came up where it might be considered for a rezone. So these six properties falling between two <coughs> highways essentially because that's what they were at the time. Um, if I were just looking at a map I might say it doesn't really make sense to put residential abutting commercial between two highways. Mm -hmm. But the six houses existed. To zone them anything else would have resulted in them being a non-conforming use, possibly creating deterioration of their property value um, and inability to finance, et cetera. Um, we didn't have a long conversation about any specific area, but I just want you to have that as a background because um, while the comprehensive plan land use map shows this as residential, that was primarily done because it protected that property value. When you go through the findings that the Planning Commission considered and that the staff recommended, um, the comprehensive plan is one that actually is both a pro and a con. It is a pro in that where you have the opportunity to co-locate and do large track development and redevelopment of a site that already has infrastructure, the plan supports that and encourages it. Um, and it supports affordable housing and other things as well, but the land use map would have been a con because Technically, the map says we don't want to go that direction. Um, having said that, if we had anticipated this kind of redevelopment, we might have shown it as something else, future land, land use, and allowed the zoning to remain the same. Um, but we really weren't anticipating at the time. So our recommendation is that we do believe it's consistent with the intent and purpose of the of the regulations that we have adopted. We think that the character, particularly that to the west and south, and in fact, commercial zoning has been creeping up north from 23rd Street now over the last 10 years. So it's coming closer to these residences already. They are segregated to themselves, which can, in fact, cause them to have a deterioration in value over time. Any redevelopment that would be done behind them would actually put them at greater risk. So if they were left alone, if you acted, you, you elected not to do this, doesn't mean that development wouldn't happen abutting them. It just might have more conflicts inherent in a proposal like that. Um, the, the proposed amendment is it made necessary because of changed or changing conditions. It's because there are some slow but steady changing conditions in this area. Uh, and um, that the current zoning uh, and the proposed, we believe, are appropriate um, given what is already there. Again, this is a budding development that is the exact same zoning classification. It is a shift in the line not a new classification to that area. And so staff recommends approval, uh, as well as the Planning Commission. At the hearing, there were some questions by neighboring property owners that were answered. In addition to that, 
Um, there was meetings held absent the public process between the developers and some of the adjacent property owners who were occupants so that they too could have first-hand information from the developers. The developers um, are here if you have any questions of them, uh, but uh, our recommendation is that you uh, amend the zoning regulations, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mrs. Lee? And if you'd like, it is six tracks, 1906, 1914, 1920, 1926, 1932, and 1940 South Princeton, just in case somebody's not specifically aware of what pro property we're talking about. So, uh, Ms. Lee, that, that's all the, uh, the residences on mm -hmm. the west side of Princeton? Mm -hmm. Yes, the on the west side of that northbound Princeton lane. Okay. That is the only residential tracks there. You don't have residential again until you get north of 13th. Well, technically 12th. So it does a big gap on that northbound stuff. There's yeah. really not any there. <coughs> any other comments or questions before we? Okay, then I would entertain a motion. Madam Mayor. Commissioner. I move that we approve the ordinance rezoning um, an area within the city limits um, from R1 low density residential district to C3 commercial our general commercial district. Is there a second? I'll second. So it has been moved and seconded um, as stated in item 16. Is there any discussion? We do have Be some there. residents from that area that are in attendance at the meeting. Perhaps they would like to say something. Do we have anyone that wants to speak or comments or questions from anyone that lives in the area or feedback at all? We're glad you were able to yes, come and, and listen in on the proceedings and see, yes. But so no questions at this point? Okay. Any questions from the commission? No. Okay, then we will proceed to vote. How do you vote? Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? And I vote yes. Mayor Reed? I vote yes and motion carries. At this time we would have a report by our city manager. Your mic's off. Oh, well, my mic was off. Sorry. <laughs> couldn't read it. Uh, city, uh, that's so you couldn't hear the city attorney speaking under his breath. So. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens. All the positive um, things the, he was saying. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. The city county um, summit has been set. I set you those dates. I will get those back out to you. We've changed the second session from six to eight because you have a study session on on that evening and and you do have some business to take care of so it'll be six to eight um and uh so we'll i'll get you more information on that with respect to the um, um bids for the street work uh, they should be on the street so to speak <laughs> june 9th we plan to have a bid opening on june 30th have it to you at your study session that night and then hopefully, um, barring any unforeseen circumstances, we'll have it on a July 2nd city commission meeting so we can improve and start the work as soon as possible. And that's all I have. Okay. We will start uh, commissioner reports with Mr. Jorgensen. Commissioner Jorgensen. <laughs> um, I have no report this evening. Mike? I have nothing either. Sarah? Um, I'd like to thank Richard for his service um, and I was uh, touched by <coughs> his statement of saying that he wanted to help people and help Ottawa and I really think that that's what we as a commission want to do too so we echo that and thank you Richard for um, being a, a strong voice for helping others um, and I know that just because you're leaving the city of Ottawa it just means you have that much more time to help others right <laughs> And anybody listening, Richard's now ready to take your appointment. <laughs> no, really. No, thank you. All kidding aside, thank you for your service. Um, and, and to his wife, Susan, thank you, too. Um, we had mentioned in our last meeting that um, if the bond sale had gone through, that we would be um, allocating a tremendous amount of funds to streets. And, and now that's come to fruition, and we're going to see um, over a million dollars um, being poured into our streets and into making Ottawa really the best place um, to live 
And so um, I certainly thank Mr. Bird um, for all of the tireless work that he did to make sure that that could happen and for bringing that to, to our table and so that we could save the citizens of Ottawa so much and also give them great streets. So thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dickinson. Um, I'm just going to point out that Friday <coughs> night starts um, Suzuki Strings uh, month of performances. I, even though it's been, uh, they're celebrating 40 years this year, and even though it's been going on for 40 years, I still think it's a, um, a hidden gem in our community. Um, it's interesting that, for instance, this Friday will be a, a member of the Los Angeles Philharmonic playing, um, somebody who probably plays to thousands of people every performance, and um, I'm guessing there will only be maybe a few hundred people um, there. And it would be great to, in the future to see um, huge crowds from our community, realizing what a great opportunity it is to see some of these great performances. I know next week, um, Mr. Brian Lewis will be playing, who is a Ottawa citizen, but also in himself a, a very ex accomplished <coughs> musician. And so I would uh, suggest that you go on their website and look at their schedule throughout the month of June. Almost every night there is great music happening here in Ottawa, what I would consider world class. So, And you also can see them at the Swan Arts Festival on sa Saturday, June 21st, too. So that's another opportunity. Great. So. And under Mayor's comments, I had a couple things. It, it's on your announcements, but just to remind you that Richard Oglesby's retirement is June 13th, and apparently that's your lucky number because I think that's when you started work was on the 13th as well. So, <laughs> so if it would be great to have um, a lot of people show up for that. I, um, since our last uh, evening meeting, I was able to attend the Memorial Day service that the VFW hosted downtown at our Veterans Memorial on Memorial Day. It was a fantastic, very professional, dignified service. I was so impressed. And it's grown over the several years that they've had it. And I would just encourage everybody to next year, it's easy to remember, it's on Memorial Day, to try to get out there and attend that. It's just an amazing service. And we appreciate them being willing to do that. Um, over the last couple meetings, we've talked a lot about buying and selling <coughs> property, it seems like. And we're not typically in that business. But over the years with our Healthy Communities Initiative and our Playful City designation and our Let's Move designation, we've been watching and, and hoping for opportunities to place parks and different types <coughs> of um, positions and opportunities in the community that will get people out and get them active. And so we happen to have that happen with that property on 15th Street. Um, and our county partners kind of helped us with that to bring that opportunity to light for us. And so we, um, that particular property had not ever been developed once since that initial house was put in there. So we are thankful for that opportunity, thankful for our partners who, um, are, who helped us, you know, recognize that opportunity as well. And with that, I would uh, bring you to your announcements. Richard, yes, I'm sorry. One more thing, please. Um, this Friday is Friday Forum. The speaker is uh, Colonel Ernest Garcia, who is the superintendent of the Highway Patrol, but also a decorated retired Marine. Um, Colonel <laughs> Garcia was uh, involved in a lot of things during his tenure, uh, one of them being uh, Panama in the Panama Canal. But the other thing that June 6th is, is the 70th anniversary of the day that the Allies invaded Europe to free Europe from tyranny and fascist. And there were Kansans there, there were Ottawans there, and there were all Americans there that shed their blood so we can be here today along with other members of the free world. And that anniversary should not be forgotten. Thank you for that. We will have our regular study session on Monday at 4. Um, we talked about the retirement reception. I want to make sure that you notice June 21st through the 23rd is our first annual Swan Arts Festival, um, as Commissioner Dickinson talked about. And I believe they are still looking for volunteers. So you can go to the website, or you can contact Commissioner Dickinson afterwards um, for that. And then we do have a special call uh, with, for our quarterly retreat with Mr. John Devine. That is on June 30th. And with that, I would like to hear a motion for adjournment. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs> I think there's only one eye there.